What's up, Griff? Hey, guys. Uh, girls, I should say. Hey, girls. Ladies. Crystal, what's up? No, somebody come fix me. Can you hear me, Ashley? What's up, Nick? Yes, I can. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Good. Healthy in your house? So far. Yeah. <laughs> How about you guys? Yeah, I'm good. It's me and my dog. We're both good. <laughs> I saw your Zoom today with um, Navy. That's cool. Oh, yeah, it was fun. It was fun. She had a lot of good stuff to say. Are they doing anything now? Navy? Yeah. No, just, everything. Just, just Zoom stuff. Yeah. Everything is virtual, just like everyone else. But they, the schooling is so grueling. The girls are all day, every day. Right. Silly. What about you? Are you able to go into work or no? Um, I'm working two days a week for urgent things only. Gotcha. So I do um, I do wound care, so I'm doing that because that kind of doesn't get canceled, but no, nothing. I, I saw 12 patients today. Gotcha. Thanks. <laughs> gotcha. So 12 isn't a lot for you? Oh, no. Normal Wednesday is like 50. Oh, my gosh. So it's 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 crazy man well it's like my wednesday with phone calls from parents <laughs> 50, 50 phone calls <laughs> <laughs> we'll uh we'll give it one more minute here it looks like we got a minute to go quite a few people logging on oh hey bev I see your hands are tied. You're on mute. <laughs> ah, sorry. I was just doing a training session with my our age group, so I'm like a hot mess right now. Oh, nice. Woo. Between that and teaching, this new I I rather much be in the classroom than uh doing this virtual stuff. I can't imagine. Especially PE, it's kind of hard. There's not much you can really do besides fitness. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, lots of jumping jacks, I'm sure. Yeah. And jump roping if they have a jump rope. If not, we're jumping the lines. Yep, yep, I can see that. Gosh. <sighs> Are you doing a jump roping course right now? <laughs> um, I, I, I was um, when I was teaching. Like, we had just finished up one. So now I've been sending some things home and doing some things with them that they could do for, like, trainings. I have a lot of athletes in our school, so I've always told them that they need to learn to do that because it's Eden. When you go to speed and strength in high school and college, you're going to have to be able to jump rope and stamina. So I've been challenging those that are athletes to work on their stamina and how long they can go for. And then those that aren't really athletic, I'm teaching them a lot of the tricks and trying to come up with routines with tricks and stuff like that. So you teach gym? I teach, yeah. I teach elementary K to five. Okay. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, PE. So kindergarten online is very entertaining. I'm sure. <laughs> they yeah, just want to wave and say hi, and they're sitting there eating their breakfast or whatever. <laughs> so it's fun. Thank God you have the mute button, Bob. Bev. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, hey, hey folks, let's let's go ahead. It's uh, about a minute after seven, and we'll get things started. I, I'll, I'll go ahead and I talk to Bev and Ash, Kristen. I'll just kind of moderate a little bit and keep things flowing. 
um, based off some of the other calls that we did. But, but girls, thank you for joining today. Obviously, we have a lot of great female athletes and a lot of great female coaches um, and volunteers in our club that, you know, we, we hope to begin to spotlight and, and create a, I guess, a, a lifeline or a connection for all, you, all, the young, or all our players to our coaches and so forth. So, you know, we, I picked Coach Bev and Coach Krista and Coach Ashley first, and that's not because they're the greatest or not saying they're not the greatest, right? We think they are, but, um, you know, we have probably 10 to 15 female coaches in the club, which I believe is the largest in the Baltimore area, and, and that's for a reason, right? And it shows it in our girls' side with um, the connection that you have with them and the style of play, and, and, it's, and it's a good thing. So, you know, what, what we hope to do tonight is talk a little bit about their careers, since you don't always have time to catch up with them on the field or off the field, see what their journey was from when they were little like you or – if you're in high school on the call, from that time frame on to, to their college journey, all three of them played Division I soccer in college. So we're going to go ahead and kick it off and just have each one of them tell, tell you a little bit about their path. And then we have a couple questions, and then we'd love to open it up to all the ladies on the line um, with any questions for our three coaches. So, again, we have Coach Krista Gredline, who coaches the 08 Elite. We have Coach Bev Salenza, who coaches the 09 Elite girls. And we got Ashley Myers, who is our technical director of the club. And, and I think everybody pretty much knows all three of them um, or has seen all three of them around. They do a great job with their teams and players. So we want to give each one of them a chance to just kind of tell their story. So which one of, which one of you three ladies want to go first? <laughs> go ahead, Ash. Yeah, uh, Ash. Everybody knows Coach Ash, so maybe Coach Ash will go first. <laughs> there you go, Ashley. <laughs> well, here we go. I'll try to make it as, as short and sweet as possible for you guys so that you don't get bored, okay? So I think um, probably, hopefully, a lot of you guys can relate, okay? Hopefully, you started at the same age. So as soon as I could walk, I had a ball on my feet, right? As soon as I could walk. Um, played local rec leagues at like four, five, six. Um, and, and then from about the ages of seven to nine, I played for a little boys team in Falston, um, probably seven to ten. Um, and I really, I love playing with the little boys because it kind of installed that competitive spirit um, and that speed of play. And also I think it kind of from the start made me feel like I needed to prove something, right? Um, and then about 10 to 12, I played for a local team in Parkville. We were called the Parkville Phoenix. Um, good little team. That's where I won my first state cup. Um, that, was a, that was a fun team. Um, and then during that time too, at about 10 years old, I tried out for the Maryland ODP team. So when we start to talk to you guys a little bit about the pathway, the pathway for you guys now versus then, that'll make a little more sense. I know you've all probably heard of Maryland ODP still, um, but I started doing that at around 10 um, and did that all the way up to college. Um, and then really the last chunk of my youth playing experience was uh, at about 12, 12 years old, I went to Bethesda, uh, Bethesda Soccer Club, and I played there from, from 12 years old to, to college. So one notable difference is um, Krista and uh, Bev may have had a really good Baltimore team during that time. But for, for my age group, it was very hard to find during that, that year, for whatever reason, five or six of us went down to Bethesda. So um, I think you guys are in a really unique position now where we've got a lot of clubs in Baltimore flooded with tons of age groups um, where you can find, find great teams and you know great teams here at Union. Um, and then from there, I mean, I could probably just say I did ODP, Maryland State team, and then we'll talk a little bit about that pathway I went on to do, make the regional team. Um, so it went state team, regional team, national team. I went on to make the regional team at about 13 all the way up through high school, and then national team 16, 17, and 20. Um, and then from there, I mean, the next piece is just college. I went and played soccer at Penn State. Um, I don't know if any of you guys are familiar with that, but Penn, I went and played at Penn State. Good, I like the thumbs up. I'm like waiting for <laughs> someone to say we are. <laughs> but you guys are all on mute. Um, so I, I played at Penn State, and then I actually had a medical redshirt year uh, my freshman year, so I don't know if you guys know what that is, but that's pretty much you get an extra year to play. And I finished all my credits for school at Penn State, and I had the opportunity to go get a year of my graduate school paid for and play at the University of North Carolina at Wilmington. So I went and did that for a while. I played there for one year and got my graduate degree. And then from there, I went and played professionally in Iceland for a season in 2010 before uh, I think the, the women's league here had collapsed. So everyone 
in the United States that was female had to go overseas to play. We didn't have a league here. Um, so that's another thing that's pretty awesome for you guys is we have a league now and it's nice and strong. Um, and then after 2010, I didn't want to go overseas anymore and kind of just wanted to train kids and, and coach. And so I, I did that. Um, and eight years later, I decided I had the itch to play again, which is insane <laughs> and trained for about six months and was in with the Washington spirit in their training camp. Um, didn't get contracted through that, but it was such a great experience just to be back and playing after eight years. Um, and have one last little hurrah in Brisbane, Australia, where I played professionally just for a very, very short period of time, 2018. Um, so that's pretty much the gist of, of my journey through the game as a player and then how that led into coaching all the while from 2010 until now. I've been training players individually, small groups, camps, and have been with Union for a, a year now. Very, very good, Coach Ash, and it's a great story. Coach Ashley, now you left out one small part. You played in high school, correct? Yeah, yes. I'm sorry. So I played at, uh, played at John Carroll. <laughs> and um, during that time, I will note that everyone went on and on about, like, all the other high schools, McDonald's, Spalding, all those schools. And we won. We went 21-0 my senior year. <laughs> so, yeah, I played, at, I played at, uh, at John Carroll all four years. Very cool. Very cool. Coach Krista, you want to share a little bit about your journey? Yeah, sure. Hi, guys. Um, so I am um, a little bit, I'll say a little bit older than Ashley. So my experience <laughs> is going to reflect that a little differently. When I started playing soccer, which was probably same as you guys, six or seven in a league on a team, um, there were no girls soccer teams around. That, that wasn't an option. You, if you wanted to play soccer, you, you play with boys. So I played for Overly Rec Council, which back then was a pretty good rec council to play for. Um, you played on Saturdays and you played on Sundays. Um, Sunday was travel. If you made the travel team, which I did as a girl, there was two of us, three of us that made the team as a girl. Um, and we say travel and it's not the travel that you guys necessarily think of. Um, we lived in Overly and we traveled to Rosedale. Um, we traveled to Parkville. We traveled to Perry Hall. Um, if we had a real far game, we might've went to Boston, but that, that was travel when I was a kid. Uh, we didn't go to Virginia. We didn't go to North Carolina. We didn't do anything like that. Um, but it was still the thing that we did. Um, the other difference back when I was a kid is soccer only happened in the fall. So most kids played multiple sports, uh, which, you know, some of us do that now. But soccer went in the fall. You might have had an indoor season in the, in the winter, and then you were done. And you didn't play soccer again until, until next fall. So until I was about almost high school age, that's what I did. Um, there was no club soccer, not in the Baltimore area yet. Um, this was back in the I guess, 70s and 80s, early 80s. So it just didn't exist like it is now. Uh, we didn't have tournaments. We didn't. We didn't go anywhere. We kind of stayed in our neighborhood and we played soccer. Um, so that was my, that was my youth soccer. Um, I do remember one of the first girls teams I got to play on, I was about 12 or 13. And one of my friend's brothers said, let's get a girls team together. Um, we got a girls team together and there was a league. It was somewhere, I think in Anne Arundel County towards DC. Um, and we played in that. And that was the first time I got to play against girls. Um, from there, uh, I went to Catholic High, which um, back then, believe it or not, was one of the powerhouses in Maryland. Um, we won three of my four years there. Um, coincidentally, I played for the same coach that Ashley did at John Carroll many, many years later. Um, it's kind of funny. But um, so after high school, I went to college. I went to UMBC, which is where Mike went, Coach Mike went, uh, and a bunch, of <laughs> a bunch of other coaches here. Um, played there and then from there I was kind of done um, we didn't have um, I mean it was it was a completely different thing than it was here uh, there was no ODP yet in this area um, there was barely girls soccer you couldn't really find it anywhere um, I did play on a, a state select team um, which was probably the first time I experienced playing at a tournament and I think I was 15 years old um, and on that team, we went and we played in tournaments uh, all over Europe for, for five, 
five weeks, which was a pretty great experience. Um, so th that was it for, uh, you know, it, it was very different than what you guys have now um, back then. Um, college, college was very similar. It was the same. It was a little different. It, the, the scholarships weren't available at the same kind of schools that, they, that it is now. Um, some schools had money for girls. Some schools didn't. Um, and you know, I chose one that did on purpose. I'm happy for it now because you don't want to have the student debt if you don't need it. Um, after that, I went to medical school, so my soccer career kind of ended at the end of college. Um, and let me tell you what, it's it's not fun when you just figure out that this is the last time you're going to play soccer. Um, it's just, oh geez, I'm not playing soccer anymore. So I went to medical school and did a residency in Philadelphia. And I'm going to say maybe six years into that time there, I was uh, in the park and I met a group of people who were soccer players, um, kids, and their parents said, we need a coach. We're, we're, our coach is leaving and we need a coach. So um, that's how I started coaching. It was probably around the year 2000, 20 some years ago. I coached a team in Philadelphia just as I was ending my, uh, my residency training. Um, came back, moved back to, to Maryland and said, well, I need to coach. Um, so since then, I guess it's been 20 years, that's what I've been doing. I've been coaching um, multiple teams, clubs that don't even exist in this area anymore. I'm sure Mike's heard of them. Um, Soccer Club of Baltimore, Baltimore Bays, um, Parkville Soccer Club, which became Premier, which is now Copper Mine, because every club just likes to change names. Um, <laughs> from there, I joined Perry Hall White Marsh, which is now Union, um, and that's where I've been ever since. Um, I, I think coaching has brought uh, a lot to, to, to my life. I, I now coach two of my kids, which I never thought would, would happen. Um, I thought I'd be well done with this by now, but I, I, I don't know. Once you're in it, you're in it. <laughs> Coach Krista, what, what's your favorite part of coaching? Oh, that's a tough one. Um, watching the kids do something you ask them to do. When they execute something you, you taught them and they do it, it's, it's, it's one of the best feelings ever. Coach Krista, so you said you started coaching about 20 years ago. Do you have some girls that over the years you've kept in touch with that went on to play in college and Oh, oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, I have kids that, um, I mean, I'm, I'm showing you how old I am. I have kids that are already having babies that are now playing soccer. <laughs> but um, well, I coached a team back in, um, I'd say, uh, 12 years ago, and a bunch of them went on to be do some great things. Um, Bridget Andrzejewski actually was on my team from the age of 6 to 13. Um, she just got drafted to play for Houston Dash. Um, there was probably th three or four kids on that team that were in the national team pool. Um, one is on the Puerto Rican national team now. Um, and yeah, it's great to, to keep up with them. And when you're coach kids that start playing in college and you can watch them on TV, it, it's, it's, it's a great thing. That's awesome. Thank you, Coach Krista. Coach Bev, you're up. All right. Well, as the Ash, Coach Ashling, Chris, Chris, I said, they, I started around the same age, six, seven or so, um, playing soccer. I started in what was called CYO when we were younger. It was the Catholic Youth Organization. So I started out playing for St. Clair's. Um, I stayed there until, for about two or three years, and then I um, moved to Perry Hall. So then I started playing for St. Joe's Fullerton um, and played CYO. We were still CYO there. We played there for about three or four years and then our coach our team was pretty strong in the area because when I grew up there wasn't a lot of clubs in the area I'm, I'm in the, I'm, my age is between coach Ashley and Co coach Krista so things were starting to happen after coach Krista's age and we were starting I was at the beginning of that where we were having um we had a good team we we're starting to have a good club team in the Baltimore area Hartford County was trying to have one but a lot of those girls were coming down towards um, our club, the club I played for, once we went from CYO, our coach took us and we became what was called the Shakedowns. Um, and we were the, there's two Shakedowns. We're the original, I'm the original Shakedown, so I'm the older one. Um, so it was us and then there was Columbia was the other club team kind of in the area. So if you were playing club soccer, you had to make one of those two clubs at that time. There wasn't a lot of 
teams to try out for. Um, so I stayed on the shakedowns actually from the start until my junior year of high school. We all kind of stayed together. We won, I want to say four or five state cups then. Um, we went to regionals. We had some good battles in regionals. We could never get past. We lost once in the regional finals. We were never able to make it to the finals, but we got to have a lot of those experiences traveling. Um, we didn't have tryouts like we do now. So like you were on that team and you had to be like, if, if you made the team, the coach then would invite players. Like you had to be invited to come try out and then there would be cuts if they brought somebody to stay. So eventually we had girls from Carroll County, Harford County, Howard County, um, Baltimore. And then we even had one that was out Frederick County that would come. And again, we didn't practice like we practice now. You know, we were lucky to get maybe five or six training sessions in at the beginning of our career um, at a time. And then we had our indoor soccer. Um, and then spring was kind of off for the first two or three years. Then when I was probably about 10 or 11, then spring soccer started picking up. But again, it wasn't this commitment um, like we have now with the training. So you kind of played spring soccer, but you like showed up for games and then you left and you went to your softball game or your lacrosse game. It wasn't Saturday, Sunday. Um, so after CYO, I went to, and I, I was uh, high school, I went to Perry Hall. Um, Perry Hall, uh, we lost twice in the state finals when I was there, um, but we did really well in our county, beating Delaney a couple times and things like that. And then when I was looking to go to college, um, I was looking, D, we were looking, I had some D1, D2 schools and looking around. Um, I had to make a decision. Um, a family member had gotten sick. So last minute I decided not to go away. So then I went to Essex Community College so I could keep playing. Um, Cause sometimes you'll find out there's decisions that are out of your control when you guys are, gals are looking. Um, that's one thing I want you to keep in your mind. If you're not, I did do, um, you know, tried out for ODP and made it at the time. Money was a little, um, tight back then so my parents and I and I kind of made a decision not to make them stress about it and I kept up my touches playing with the boys in the neighborhood and doing things like that that's just one thing you think about if you've ever come to a challenge like that there are ways that you can still be a great player maybe and not have, be, be able to afford the ODP or you know things like that they're all great but sometimes there's challenges that are out of your control and you have to kind of take the best steps with that so that was one thing I experienced kind of growing up a decision we kind of had to make and then I had to face that same decision um, going into college I had been really thinking I was going to go away um, and then I had to make a decision that my parents needed some help at home so I decided to stay home then I stayed home went to Essex for two years kind of lucked out because coach Jules did the same thing and that's where I met coach Jules we both ended up playing at Essex Community College we went to nationals I was um, uh, all-american honorable mention when I was there and then when I was in my last season, I um, was recruited, like talking to the coach. And then I went to UMBC for my uh, last two years of college uh, to finish division one, which was a great opportunity because I was still home and local and got to play. Um, but it's just, a, it's a great experience. Just soccer brings so much to life than it does just, you know, the, the relationships that you build. And now I'm seeing them as a coach. I had taken off for a little while after we graduated from UMBC. I was working on my teaching, um, getting used to the classroom and all that stuff. And then after becoming a mom, um, Coach Jules was still playing. So I was more being a fan at that time and running around while he was still playing for the blast. And then when his career started to slow down a little bit, our daughters were starting to play and I had a couple parents kind of like, why don't you go and try to coach girls? And I was like, well, I don't know. I haven't played in a while. I didn't know if I still had what it took to be a coach. And then I was like, you know what? I'll give it a try. I, you know, I, I know the game. I'll teach them when I'm young. And it was the best decision I've ever made. Uh, I know it's hard at times for me as a mom and as, a full, you know, we're being a teacher and stuff, there's times where I feel like I'm running around with the chicken with my head cut off. But to be out there with those girls on the field is such a rewarding feeling. Like, I love watching all these girls play in this club. Like, just doing the camps and stuff, they work so hard. And they, they're such good um, I want to say students of the game, they take what we tell them and they go. And I wish I had a female to look up to when I was younger. I had, I played for all male coaches until I got to UMBC, um, which they were bad, but it's always nice to have that female just because I know kind of where she was coming from when she would tell me stuff. 
um, and teach. I'm like, okay, well, you've been there. All right, I got it. I can do it. So I've been coaching the last few years and hopefully I can keep it going with uh, my age group and as long as I can. And I still play, even though we're in a delay right now. I've still been trying to play. I got back out probably four or five years ago and been playing one to two nights a week. So that's been fun, even though I'm a little old now. Coach Bev, Coach Ashley, Coach Krista all took different paths to play, right, in high school, in college, um, whether it was ODP, club soccer, right? Now, now t everybody has a different path, right, whether that's football, soccer, basketball, you name it. But you meet a lot of interesting people along the way or people that have a, a strong influence. So I don't know if any one of you want to jump in here and maybe you had one role model or one coach or even a parent along the way, or a friend who sticks out to you that really helped helped you achieve your goals, or or gave you a message that stuck with you. Hmm. Well, I can talk real quick just my experience at UMBC. When I went to UMBC, the coach that I originally thought I was going to play for, she left before I got there, um, and we'd had a new coach come in, and for some reason, I felt like I was always working really hard, really hard, but I could never. She, I didn't feel like she believed in me and I was like just always beat myself up and I had this assistant coach um her name was Michelle Sam and she actually played at Maryland um and she pulled me aside one time in the game uh to a game and was like you could tell I was just in my own head I was taking myself out of the game and she's like just kind of told me you know what to do believe in yourself and it will happen relax like just take that deep breath go with it and it'll all fall into place and it did. I still had those battles at times where I felt like I, you know, I just wasn't getting where I wanted to be and what was happening. We pushed through, you know, things went the way it went. The season got better as we went along. And then ironically, the next year, she ended up being our head coach. And she was just from that moment, she was always one of those I know I could turn to. And I could just look at her and she would just tell me, she always point her head and go, believe in yourself. And that was just one of those things like, you're going to make a mistake. What, what are you going to do to fix it? Are you going to effort or give up kind of thing? So that was just one of those things, believe in yourself and work to fix the problem. That, you know, so that was just one of those things, like if I lost the ball because I played for it, you know, could I recover and help my team win it back? Or was I going to sit there and, you know, stop my feet? So that was just one of those things that she always told me. Coach Krista, Coach Ashley, anybody, anyone influence you or leave a strong message with you throughout your careers? I mean, I was fortunate to have uh, so many people come to mind, some of which aren't female, but I'm going to bring up the, the female role model. So I would say the first time I remember my head was like about to explode was um, watching. I had I was probably seven or eight and I was at the Faustin Bowl. I remember exactly where I was. McDonough was playing Faustin for some reason. And I saw this girl dribble through like 10 players and finish it. Um, her name was, uh, was Laurie Schwoy and she was one that as a little kid in the area, I just like, I thought she was like, I want to, I want to be able to play like that. Um, so those of you who don't know, she ended up being a North Carolina Tar Heel and played on the women's national team, um, had some injuries, but was a great player right here from Baltimore as well. Um, and then I would say somebody that made like a really big impact on me actually, um, is right within our club. So plays for Krista's team. So Kelly uh, Pinnell, whose daughter plays for Krista, she was my, one of my assistant high school coaches at John Carroll. She made an impact. And her sister, Cindy, um, I was very, very close with. She would train me all the time. And she was kind of one of those ones like Bev, um, where she was like very encouraging. So she played, she coached my ODP team. Um, I was very uh, critical during that time. And it kind of ended up turning to where it kind of became too critical, I guess. And so she was a really um, strong influence on keeping me very positive and kind of keeping me from overthinking. Um, so she, I, she sticks out. She ended up playing at Syracuse. She was a, a really good player as well. And she's right here from Baltimore. So those are, those are probably the two. I had some female coaches in college, but those are the two growing up that really made an impact on me in this area. Krista? Yeah, so um, when I was in high school, we had, um, can you hear me? Yep. Um, I had, um, we had a coach the first couple of years who probably wasn't that great of a coach and um, um, didn't do a lot of coaching. 
And luckily we had a lot of talent on the team, so we did fine anyway. Um, however, I don't know that we were playing the best soccer. Actually, I know we weren't playing the best soccer now that I'm a coach and looking back on it. Um, and in my senior year, we ended up with a new coach, a new, two new coaches, both of who coached Ashley in her high school because they soon switched schools. And they kind of just switched everything around. And you could tell the first day of, of, of summer training that this is going to be a lot different. Um, this is not what we're used to. Um, this is probably not what we're going to like. Um, and in the beginning, I had a little bit of a hard time with it. Um, I was asked to do things that I just was like, I don't really want to do that. I don't understand it. What good is it? Um, however, um, I quickly realized that, that they knew best and um, I was a better player for it. So, um, and I always will remember what I learned from them and um, that in the beginning, it just wasn't easy and wasn't fun and it was new and sometimes you're just going to feel like that and you just have to keep going. Um, so that was one, um, you know, another one, I, I think I'm going to have to, you know, I know it's another male. Um, it's going to have to be um, my father who um, showed up every single game of my life. I, I don't think he's ever missed. Um, never said a word, never was critical. Um, just kind of came and said, you played great. Um, sometimes we would get in a fight because I'd come off the field and I say, I didn't play great. Don't tell me I played great. That, that's just a ridiculous statement. Um, yet when I look back on it now, it was the best thing ever. Um, you know, and I, I, I see some of your parents and, uh, I, I see some things that happen when you're getting in the car and when you're leaving. And, um, sometimes that makes me a little sad. Um, I never had to do that. Uh, I had, um, parents who just showed up and, and were supportive and um, I hope I as a coach do that and I certainly hope as a parent I do that um, but I have to say that was probably my two. That's pretty awesome Krista. L ladies so and this is out there for any of you again and then we'll get to some question and answers real quick from the girls but maybe just talk real quickly about you know some of the challenges along the way. Uh, you've, you've each touched a little bit on how the game is different right now but I, I don't know that all the girls understand how many opportunities are really out there for them right now compared to 10, 15, 20 years ago. Maybe touch on that a little bit and then we'll do some question and answer. I'll, I'll go a little bit if that's all right. Uh, you guys, I mean, I, I, I wish I could play soccer today. Um, I was um, pretty much a, a nut when I was growing up and that's all I wanted to do. And, the, the opportunities just weren't there for me at that time. Um, I mean, you, you guys, if you, if you really want, you, you can find training opportunities every day of the week. Um, you know, there's, there's resources within this club that are just endless. Um, I mean, we're, we're, we're quarantined at home and you, we still have things every day for you to do. Um, you know, when, I, when I was your age, I basically had a soccer ball and I had a very small yard. And that was it. Um, and I had a father and a brother who would play sometimes, but that was it. And now you have uh, dribble up balls and you have uh, numerous things you can do online with phones and all kinds of uh, videos. And, and it, it's endless what you can do um, from a training standpoint. But then beyond that, the tournaments and I, I, and the, the, just the atmosphere that you, you, you get to be a part of is, is just unbelievable. Um, and, and then if you want to continue on, there's just so many opportunities now. I mean, there was no professional soccer for women. I mean, it wasn't even a thought for me. It, it didn't exist. Um, there wasn't even Olympics for women um, when I was a kid. It's just you, you played soccer as a kid and you, that was it. Um, now you can just, if, if you want to do it, you can you can make it happen. You can do it. Um, I, 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 again, I, I wish I was a kid now and could redo it. You guys are so lucky. Very cool. Ash, Bev? Bev, you want to go first? No, you can go. Go ahead. Are you sure? Yeah, all you. <laughs> okay. So I would say a um, little bit different than, than Krista in the fact that 
um, there was money was more readily available, I guess, for college, uh, for scholarships everywhere. Um, the club system had really taken off for girls at, at that time. Um, I think the big difference is for, for my age group during that time, they were trying to get a women's league off the ground at that point, And it had collapsed three times because of funding. So going into college, we were all like, thank God there's a way to play after. And then it collapsed. I think then it came, it came back and it collapsed a second time. Um, when my class graduated in 2010, there were no options here. Uh, we did have those options overseas though, which was like, thank God we had those options. But I think the thing probably from now that's changing from my generation to yours is if we wanted to play pro, we pretty much had to pay to play. <laughs> so when we went overseas, it was like a big deal if you could get a deal where they flew you over and gave you housing um, and got you food and stuff. Um, as long as they could kind of take care of you to support you during that time, but you were still poor. Um, now I see a lot of my friends and even let me back up, even when they got the league back up and running here, I had friends that were world-class, they were playing on the national team and they were living in people's basements so that they could keep playing. Um, and now I think for your generation coming up, that's changing. I have friends making really decent money and they're trying to get paid much better. So you guys will have the opportunity not only to play the game that you have, but to make a living doing it which is the goal at the end of the day right we will play for nothing but if you can give us money to play that's the, that's the end goal right um so that was uh i think that's probably one of the biggest differences and then i kind of already touched on that with club um both the baltimore area i think had one club which i think that i remember being very good for girls or decent for girls and it was soccer club of baltimore where bet played um, and BFC during that time. But for whatever reason, again, my group didn't have a good team, so I had to go to Bethesda. So I think you guys are also very fortunate in the sense that you have so many opportunities right here. Um, we, I don't remember us having that. So that's probably um, my bit on that. Go ahead, Bev. No, I almost the exact same thing they said. Um, I would have loved to have opportunities for somebody to train. My parents weren't soccer players. Um, so I was really the first one out of the oldest of three girls to really play soccer. So um, my sisters would play a little bit, but they weren't into it as much as I was when I was younger. And I remember coming home from a tournament and just, we had an old shed that had like white lines on it. And I, whoop, I just muted it somehow. Um, would just shoot at it for hours. I would set up like, I want to hit this corner and I would just strike it all the different ways I could strike it. Like I just, would come up with ways to work on skills on my own. I didn't, you know, and I, we were, I wasn't trained. My team wasn't trained as much on the foot skills and everything that we have now. Um, we were much more, I understood the game, how to play and move, play and move. I would have loved to have this um, constant development of the foot skills, getting quicker on my feet and things like that. And just knowing, you know, believe in myself, I'm going to take this person on, I can beat them and I can go. So just having the opportunities to continue practicing it within this club has been amazing. Um, same thing with the professional. Um, I was actually teammates with Laura Shoy. We grew up together. I was actually just watching an old video yesterday of us dancing and singing at like 10. Like, so watching Laurie go through that, her and I were really close and we were, when she had high school really took off and I just had never known those opportunities of what could have been out there, you know, but, the professional league kept falling apart. So I never thought, I just assumed, okay, if I'm lucky enough to play in college, that's great. Then I'm kind of done. But then she was able, things start perking up and she was able to get that opportunity, which was really cool to watch knowing her and having those opportunities. But now it's a little bit more consistent for you. And the 99ers were really big. They were a couple years after I graduated high school, but watching them like put so much passion. I wish I was younger at that age to see the when they won it. Cause they've just, put so much fire in me even though I was almost in my last year of college but it was just like it made that desire to play even greater so so both of you have mentioned oh. Lar Laurie Schwoy um we we have a question that came in on the chat from Aubrey who wanted to know if if you guys have played with anyone famous so I would put Laurie in the famous category back in the day mm -hmm. uh. I play soccer with Coach Tools in the backyard. We play. 
So I'll, I'll speak to that. So I was very fortunate to play at Penn State. I, we just had a video chat today with Alyssa Nayer. Um, she's the, the goalkeeper for the World Cup team. And uh, Allie Krieger was my captain at Penn State. She's a defender at, on the national team. Um, Tobin, I actually played with on the under-17 youth wow. national team. I roomed with her in Ireland. Um, who else? Allie Long. You guys know Allie Long is. She's a mm -hmm. midfielder. She was my freshman, my uh, my roommate, my freshman year. She is one of my besties. So I would say those are probably the the top players that I played with uh, during that time. So so Coach Bev, um, Olivia wants to know if you knew Coach Jules as a kid. <laughs> No, actually I didn't, but you know what's really funny is we were going through uh, some of our old high school articles and stuff, and there's a lot with like clips of me and things like uh, stuff about my game, and then Coach Jewell on the same page, even in like college, before we knew each other, there was a, there's a lot of different articles we have where there's something about my school or something and our team and me, and then there's stuff about Coach Jules. I didn't meet him, actually, I heard of him as a player, but um, I didn't meet him until we both ended up going to Essex Community College by chance. <laughs> so we, we have a question from Audrey who wanted to know if, if any of you ladies played other sports besides soccer. I did. I played um, basketball. I started off with lacrosse, but lacrosse was um, became a problem when club soccer started taking off because it interfered. We I played in WAGS, which was kind of like the EDP of now. So when I played in the WAGS, it's Washington Area Girls League or girls soccer, we would travel like two hours for a game, going down, all the way down in Virginia, different places. Our home field was in Severna Park, so we were 45 minutes from here. I grew up in Perry Hall. Um, so lacrosse became the conflict. So then I went to softball. I played softball, went to nationals for softball, and then I also played basketball, and I played one year of basketball at Essex. Nice. Wow. Uh, um, I, uh, I did gymnastics from like three to seven. Um, one big piece of my story that I don't always bring up is that my father played professionally. So he was a huge influence in all the, all the footwork that we're doing now. My dad was doing 25 years ago with me. Um, so he was kind of before his time in that way with me. Um, so I, I was doing that from little up. So I got into gymnastics, kind of long story short, because he thought it would make me <laughs> more flexible and stronger <laughs> it was always about soccer it wasn't about gymnastics so I tried gymnastics um I, I stopped that at about eight I tried basketball I got fouled out of every game because I was a little too aggressive um and then honestly I just had an obsession with soccer I didn't I didn't really want to play anything else and during that time one of the things that Krista said is that soccer was always in the fall during my time it started to be where the spring and the summer were actually your big big months for soccer so things change a little bit where if you were going to be a if you were going to go very far in the game at that point you had to kind of commit to that um but I don't have anything against multi-sports go for it <laughs> go for it go ahead Krista coach Krista uh, I think I did a year or a year and a half of gymnastics until we had to do a show and I said nope that isn't happening um I, I played basketball for a year and I was horrible so that was not happening um, I did play softball from the very start of when I actually started playing soccer because it didn't conflict. It never conflicted. Um, I played softball through high school, um, but soccer was always my number one. Um, there was a time when I thought I was going to be the shortstop on the Orioles, but then at some point in time I switched and wanted to be a so professional soccer player, <laughs> but softball mainly. So we have a question from Bella uh, to Coach Bev. She said, you said, you mentioned you were small. Were you underestimated as a player? Yes, I was. I was very tiny. Um, like eight years old, I weighed like 38 pounds. I was really tiny and fragile, but I was quick. So, but I could out jump. I actually, all, like most of my goals in uh, high school are all head balls. I could out jump our centers in basketball, and that's just the thing I've always been known for is I was able, I really worked on developing my leg muscles and stuff just to make sure that I could hold my own when I was getting, having to shield the ball or getting knocked around. Um, so it did kind of, it would make me an easy target, but then when they realized that it wasn't going to be easy, 
and they had to change your game plan. So, but yeah, I definitely worked on that. And that's where like, really, I was like, you know what, if I can get up and over this girl, then I can get the ball in and definitely that worked to my advantage. The good thing about soccer is it, it doesn't matter what size you are, right? It's effort and work. If you can work, you can make a lot of things happen. So Olivia has a question for, for all three coaches. She wanted to know if any of you ever played sand soccer or beach soccer. <laughs> Successfully, or <laughs> I, I actually played sand soccer as an adult, which was probably a mistake. <laughs> but that's what I tried. Yes, they didn't have fun. those tournaments. <laughs> didn't have those tournaments when I was yes. younger. No. Mm -mm. Yeah, no. Yeah, I think sand soccer is a, a newer uh, sport for 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 everyone in the last ten years, ladies. So. Does anyone have any questions they want to ask? We've been asking a bunch from the chat, but does anybody want to come off mute and ask a question directly to the coaches? Now we're going radio silent. <laughs> if they don't, I have a question for you because Bev brought it up and I think it's like very important in our history. Do you guys know who the 99ers are? The 99 uh 99ers of the u.s women's national team uh, i can name them all yeah. me too <laughs> they cover my walls so do you still have I, your poster hanging <laughs> almost are I you gonna choose walls, no, are you gonna no choose shirt. that as your game of the week <laughs> yeah I, that, I, I, that's why i'm asking oh no that was like if you ever caught on me that was gonna be mine that i was almost was gonna mine. submit one to be in early <laughs> i'm sorry so that's why i'm bringing it up girl so I want you guys, if you can, I think it's important to kind of look them up. So I know most of you, give me a thumbs up if you heard of Mia Hamm. Okay, so they were the original. There was a 91 team that a lot of people didn't really know um, who paved the way for sure. They should not be forgotten. But the 99ers are the ones that really were the game changers for women's soccer for us. So those are Mia Hamm, Julie Fowdy, Christine Lilly, Michelle Akers, if you know those names, look some of them up because that those are the people that paid a lot of dues so that we could kind of have the opportunities that we have now in women's soccer. Coach um, Ashley. Yeah. Um, so I was reading a book about Alex Morgan and she said as a kid, she was inspired by Mia Hamm, Julia, um, Fowdy. Yeah. <laughs> and one more person. But she was um she went to their um retirement game, and she watched them play. She, that's how she was inspired to play soccer at a young age. At eight, she wrote like a letter to her mom saying, "I want to be a professional soccer player." And she watched all those like players, and then that's how she's a professional soccer player. Yes. So I would beg to say, Krista and, and Bev, you can agree, not agree, but I think you'll agree. I would go to say that most of the girls on the national team right now would totally agree with her. So that, that year, my, all the girls you see on the national team now were about 10 years old or younger. And if you've ever seen that picture where Brandy Chastain scores the winning goal and rips her shirt off, every little kid in America that was a female wanted to be a soccer yeah. player at that moment. Yep. So it, you guys probably don't know, but that was a, one of the biggest World Cups there was. And the U.S. Soccer Federation wanted to put it in very small venues, like, co like less than small, less than college stadiums. Uh, we didn't really have college soccer stadiums then. And the, uh, the women on that team fought and said, no, we want to pack big stadiums. So uh, they fought and fought and fought over months and months, and they ended up getting their way. And the final, the, the championship game, the final of the World Cup was in the Rose Bowl. And I believe there was 99,000 people in the Rose Bowl, which is, uh, I think, one of the biggest sporting events with the amount of people ever of any men or women's sports. Um, and that only happened because those girls fought for what they thought was right and what they wanted. Um, if I can find it, I'll send it to Coach Mike. There's a documentary. Um, it's kind of long. It's a couple hours. It might even be a couple, like a couple uh, series of it, but it's it's about that team. Um, and if you can stick through it, the beginning of it might be a little bit boring for you, but if you watch it, I promise you it gets really, really, really good. Yeah. Um, I'll look for it. I, I think it's on Netflix. I'll look for it and send it to Coach Mike if I can find it. Yeah, I think it's called The 99ers. 
It, okay, <laughs> that would make sense. <laughs> no, I, 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 Coach Chris is 100% right. It's a great documentary. Um, and, and, you know, funny enough, one of the questions I had written down for, for the three of you was, you know, how do you, how do you think the 99 squad, um, I guess, inspired the most recent World Cup winning squad in, in France two years ago or a year and a half ago? And you've I kind think of those girls made, I just think those girls, like the one, uh, I think Olivia was maybe talking, they said they found that passion. That that game brought so much passion. And I always said it before. I was at the end of my career there, but I would have loved to have been 10 years old or something. That just it that team just, you know, we said paved the way, gave them fire, and said, you know what, you can do this. We have fought and fought. Um, some a lot of you are younger girls, didn't always have the you know the same opportunity for different things, and they were like really the first team that showed, hey, we can hold our ground, we can get fans in the stands. And they showed it, and then they showed what they did, the just the pride they put in the U.S. And I think the same thing happened with the Olymp I mean, with the World Cup last year. Those girls show that passion and how they can work together. They work hard, and right now we know, you know, they're they're fighting for their. They're trying now to get, you know, equal pay and things like that. So they're finding like another passion. But it just shows you if you can find that passion, and believe in it, and believe in yourself, anything can happen. Uh mm huh. -hmm. I would say too, I think those those original players of the 91 and the 99 uh, teams set, they kind of birthed the identity for US women's soccer in terms of like the grit. Um, I think for sure, like one of the books that's sitting in my bookshelf, I went and grabbed it, is Michelle Akers. And she was an original 91 and 99. She was one of my favorite players because she was probably the first player that like, brought legit legitimacy to it for me. I didn't see a female soccer player. I saw a true footballer who was going to play on the field and have her jersey cut off of her because she had chronic fatigue syndrome and couldn't take her jersey off, right? So I think those beginning players really marked, kind of birthed the identity of U.S. women's soccer that, one, were winners, <laughs> and two, there's the competitive spirit and the grit that we have is unmatched. Girls, we've been going about 50 minutes here. Any last questions before we let uh, our three coaches of the night back to their families? Thank you. Well, look, <laughs> Coach Ashley just mentioned those 99ers and that whole group that set the path were, were winners, right? And, and Coach Bev talked about passion, right? And, and I think if you watch any of these three female coaches here, Coach Bev, Coach Ashley, Coach Krista, they all coach with a ton of passion, and all three of them are winners, okay? They're winners on the field, and they're winners off the field in their professional lives as well and with their families. So they're three great role models. We are extremely lucky to have them in our club. And if you see them, hopefully once we get out on the side, you know, on the field, on the sidelines, don't be afraid to say hi to them and pick their brain a little bit because – there is a lot more they have to share than what we were able to touch on tonight. So first, thank you three for being on and thank you. It was about 50 of us for being on here tonight. We really appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks for listening guys. Thank you. Thanks, thank, guys. You. Thank, you. thank 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 you.